How you going guys, welcome back to the channel. On this video, we're gonna be talking about how I set up my spray gun in order to get my clear coat on dead flat and dead even. Let's get into it right now. Okay, so this is the Welcome Genocide Carbonio 360 light in 1.2. Now, I do apologize if I do stumble on my words in this video. I do have a bit of a stutter, which you probably have already picked up on in my videos. In this one, I can't be bothered editing it all out. Uh, this is like my third time doing this intro, so yeah, bear with me. I've got people talking out there. All right, so I'm gonna teach you basically how I set up my spray gun to get the clear coat on dead flat and dead even. So it all starts with the 1.2 air cap on this spray gun. I like to use the 1.2s. I never used to. I used to always love 1.3s uh, in using the Devilba spray guns. Uh, since working at DNA Paints, I've fallen in love with the Welcome uh, 360 lights and they're a really great gun and they're really priced. They're priced really well as well. So uh, I'm gonna teach you basically what each function or each part of the spray gun does and how I set it up to get that paint on the way I do. So we're gonna start basically with the air cap. So this is a 1.2, as I mentioned probably five times already. Um, the top little knob here, that adjusts the fan. So obviously if you wind that all the way in clockwise, you're gonna be spraying in a jet and that's not ideal. So obviously, um, it's very rare that I do alter that. I do alter it sometimes when painting certain color candies. I will shut the fan up just slightly, just to square it up a little bit. So nine times out of 10, I'm always wound all the way anti-clockwise, so the fan is really, really open. Was a, what was that? That was a bit weird. So. A nice wide open fan lets the paint come out evenly. It atomizes much better than if it was on jet. So having that all the way open is key to getting a nice job. Okay, we, the next knob down, we have our needle. So this is what uh, basically governs how much paint gets put out the gun. Um, what I usually like to do is wind that needle all the way in. So all the way, like clockwise, and then, so you can see, some guns are a little bit different, but we'll talk about this one. So we've got a dot up the top. So what I usually do is wind that anti-clockwise. It's easier if I just do it like this. Wind it out three and a half turns. Now, winding it out three and a half turns allows a certain amount of paint to come out the spray gun at full trigger. Now, ideally when you're painting, you don't want to be pulling that trigger in halfway you really wanna have it in all the way. Um, by doing that, you get used to how much paint will come out of your spray gun. If you're trying to govern it a lot, every job's gonna look different because you're not gonna know exactly where that position was every time. So if you hold it all the way open, you're gonna learn and get used to how your gun sprays much quicker. Now another thing is the operation of a spray gun. This is pretty basic, but I thought I'd throw it in as well. Um, the trigger on spray guns, most spray guns, is what they call a, a dual action. So basically the first little pull until it stops, that's just air coming out of the gun. The next pull, the second part of the action is where paint comes out. So if you see me in my videos and I'm blowing air on the gun while I'm tack ragging, that trigger, that trigger is half pulled in. Obviously, you wanna be careful that you're not actually pushing it a little bit further and paint's coming out, or it's gonna paint your hand and all sorts. So, that's the trigger spoken about. We've spoken about our, our fan, having that all the way open, and my fluid wound three and a half turns out. Now, speaking about the air pressures I like to paint at, now they are all based on the technical data sheets of all the products that I paint. Now, generally, every brand of paint is pretty much the same in regards to air pressures. Now, base coat is, is usually applied between, say, 15 and 20 PSI, and the clear coats are usually uh, 
two bar of air pressure or 29 psi so that never changes my air pressures are always the same and you can uh, basically see what air pressures you're using by using the air regulator on the spray gun i haven't actually got one on here at, at the moment but i'll put a picture up on the screen right now of what that looks like and what other uh, air regulators do look like too so if your gun doesn't have one you know what you're looking for and you know what to look for when you go and buy one as well so that's pretty much how i set my gun up um, as i said it never changes uh, with that said we better put some paint in the gun and we'll start painting this guard gloss black all right so before we start laying down our silver metallic base coat and our black base for the other guard in the booth uh, we need to put down our hs primer surfacer so this is a high build primer but when it's mixed four to one to one it turns it into a surfacer which is like a wet and wet primer so uh, the high build application is mixed at four to one. The surfacer or the wet on wet primer is mixed at four to one to one. So obviously uh, one part more of the primer reducer. So there's not a great deal in here, but enough to put a couple of coats down over both the guards in the booth. So we'll grab another cup out, four to one to one. Hopefully we're going to have enough. <laughs> All right, so that's at the first one. Now we get our primer hardener, which is here, HS primer hardener medium. And we're going to take that to the next one And then we want to use the primer reducer, which is here somewhere. So HS primer reducer. We want to take that to the next one. So that's mixed four to one to one. Real easy. So now we'll give that a stir up. And for the application of the, the servicer, I'll be using the Wacom Ego 190. So this is the mini version of the Carbonio 360 light. Uh, it's really good as a touch-up gun or if you're painting small little parts or if you need to get the gun on a tight angle, these guns are really great. So this is in 1.2, I think I, I mentioned that. So very, very similar to the 360 light. Now, now you can also use the 190 micron filters for the primers as well. So you don't need to be using any other uh, like grades of filters. All right, that's all mixed up. So we'll grab a, another filter. We'll pour that in. It does have a smaller pot, so we may need to refill that. All right, we'll get some gloves on and we'll start applying our servicer. Alrighty guys, so for this part of the uh, video, uh, I thought I thought I'd talk about what a 50% overlap is. Now I'm gonna put some paper up on the wall here and we'll tape it off so it doesn't blow around while we're painting. Now what a 50% overlap is pretty much as it sounds. 
There's probably a lot of people thinking, why are you putting this in your video? Now this video is aimed at the beginner. So as a real brief explanation, um, I'll demonstrate with some tape first so you guys get a bit of an idea and then we'll do a spray sample on the paper. So that's our first coat of paint. The orange represents the paint we've just put down. What a 50% overlap means is that your next pass of the spray gun goes 50% down. So we've got half covering what we've just put down. So if we'd have put a third coat of paint on it, we'd go half again. So that's representing our 50% overlaps. Now, obviously, if you're painting candy um, and stuff like that, that's a 75% overlap. So what a 75 would look like is pretty much that. Oh, my finger's stuck. Ugh, that's why I hate tape and gloves. So that's pretty much a 75% overlap. So you're getting a lot more paint in the same area because candies are very transparent and you need to have coverage for it to look the color that you want it to look like. So that's a real basic, <laughs> really rough example of what overlaps are. So what we're gonna do now, we might as well get our spray gun and I'll do it with paint as well, just so you, it looks a bit more professional for this video, I guess. Um, so I have turned the booth off for this part of the video. Uh, we're just gonna do a couple of little passes with black base coat. Is that black or is that silver in this gun? I think that's silver in this gun. We won't do it with silver. We'll do it with black. So you turn that air pressure down. We'll get our air regulator. That's inside the paint room. Oh, I've grabbed the wrong gun again. That's the problem when you got all these guns, which are all the same. All right, so these are the good things about the welcome guns. The air rag goes straight on. You press the button, it turns on like so. And we want to be painting between, as I said earlier, uh, the, the 15 to 20 PSI. So hopefully that's on camera and you can see that. So we'll go roughly 15 PSI. Easy. All right, so make sure that our fan is horizontal. We don't wanna be having an uneven fan. So a 50% overlap is, we'll do a pass. So obviously that's put, I know probably about, a, a, probably about an eight inch fan pattern on the paper. Now we'll bring that down 50%. And that's how you get nice, even coverage of your base coats um, or your, your clear coats. So the clear coat you wanna put on with a 50% overlap, the same as what I've put down here. So that's pretty much it. Now we'll do the same on these two panels here. Uh, one's going black and one's going silver. I am painting uh, another video, oh, sorry, I am filming another video with orange candy. So if you wanna see that video, I'll put a, a, a link in the description when that video goes live if you wanna watch that, uh, or head over to DNA Paint's YouTube channel and you'll be able to see that video.
here. So I've just put some candy inside my base coat gun. I'm now gonna be showing you the difference between a 50% overlap and a 75% overlap with the Genocide Carbonio 360 light. Guys, I better let this video go uh, and finish this up. Uh, my battery is flashing, so I better hurry up. So, uh, appreciate everyone watching this video. I tried to cram in as much information as I could in this. Um, those gun settings that I've shown in this video won't change no matter what I'm painting, whether it's individual panels or a complete car. Um, yeah, by all means, give it a shot. If uh, it's not working out for you, maybe adjust your speed. Maybe go faster or slower and watch that paint go on. If you're painting in a booth, use the lights, look on the panel, look how the paint's going on and get that clear coat down as flat as possible. Hope you've all learned something in this one. I'm gonna leave it there. You guys will take it easy. Hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't and I'll see you guys on my next video.